Okay, so looking at the notices in section 1.4 number 2, um, our learning target is being able to find discontinuities for functions, but we're also going to be looking at how do those discontinuities or the fact that we have a continuous function, how does that affect the concept of finding the limit? So first thing we want to know though is when does a function have a vertical asymptote? Well, if you recall from our warm-up problem, that's always going to occur when a rational function has denominator that does not cancel with numerator but does equal zero for some x. So vertical asymptotes occur with rational functions. Rational just means fractional, like this one right here. That would be a rational function. This is a rational function. So if we have a denominator, um, and let's say a denominator factor that does not cancel with a numerator factor, but it does equal zero for some value of x, that's when we're going to get that vertical asymptote. So what type of continuity do we have at a vertical asymptote? Remember that? Remember, a vertical asymptote is going to look like this. We've got this vertical asymptote. This side zooms up. This side zooms down. What are we going to have there? Do we have a limit? No, we don't. We don't have a limit, and we don't have continuity. We have non-removable discontinuity. So when does a function have a hole in the graph? Well. That's when a factor of denominator is equal to a factor in the numerator and equals x, or equals zero rather, for some x. So it's basically when we have something that's going to cancel. So when a factor of the denominator and is equal to the factor in the numerator, they're the same, so they cancel out, and that's when we're going to get that removable discontinuity. If we flip back over in our notes, that was way back here on the first page. Right here on example one. See how we had a function where these two factors were exactly equal? They canceled out, and that's what gave us the hole in the graph. Okay. All right, so what type of continuity? What type of continuity was that we just looked at if it's a hole in the graph? What do we call that? What is it, Madison? All right, so this is called a removable discontinuity. So now, this is what I was saying earlier. We want to be able to find continuity and find limits just by knowing the way that these rules work without having to actually graph the function. So in this one, this looks like something that could be factored, but if I try to factor this, I'd have x and x. Are there numbers that multiply to be 3 and add to be 2? Like if I put 3 and 1, are the outers and inners going to work to give me a positive 2? No, it's not. Okay? So because that happens, even though we have a denominator, that denominator cannot be factored. And in fact, that denominator can never equal zero. So therefore, the way that's written, that's just going to be a continuous function. It's always continuous. But if I had changed that function even slightly to be x plus 3 over x squared plus 2x minus 3, 
Now this would factor. It would factor into x plus 3 and x minus 1. So if the problem had been like this, then these two would cancel, and then we would have had a removable discontinuity at x equals negative 3. <coughs> so just, thank you. So just understanding the difference there. If it can never equal 0, in other words, it can never be factored, then we're going to have continuous, but if it does have a factor that's common to the numerator and the denominator, we have that removable discontinuity. And then let's look at this one. We factor the denominator, same as we just did. And there's nothing that's going to cancel. So is there an x value that's going to make those equal 0? What are the x's that make that equal 0? x equals what, everybody? All right, so at x equals 3 and x equals negative 1, in this case, we're going to have non-removable discontinuities there. They act. So at x equals 3 and x equals negative 1, non-removable discontinuities. Now, we want to be able to do these without using a graphing calculator, but we can certainly use the graphing calculator just to check it out and see. So I'm going to go to my y equals. I'm going to type this in. I've got x divided by x squared minus 2x minus 3. I'm going to hit graph there. Here's the way it looks. See those vertical asymptotes? In fact, if I look at my table of values, I can actually see them. If I go up here to 3, I can see there's an error right there. So that means that I have a vertical asymptote. Or it means I have a hole in the graph, but in this case, it's a vertical asymptote. Same thing in negative 1, error, because of those vertical asymptotes right there. All right, example 3. This is one that you just have to know what it looks like. We've done this one several times. This is a 1. This is going to be a shift to the left 4. So normally this function kind of has a step kind of feature almost, where it's like negative 1 all the time and then it's positive 1. But that's going to occur at negative 4 now. So down here, it's always going to be negative 1. Up here, it's always going to be positive 1. That's the way these kind look. So even if I fill in those dots, would filling in those dots make it continuous to where I could graph it without lifting my pen? No. So that means then that this is going to have to be a non-removable discontinuity at x equals negative 4. So anytime you see these that match exactly and one's absolute value, that's the kind of graph you're going to end up getting and you just need to recognize it. On example four, I want to find out what kind of continuity I have. What's the quick way to do this? Anyone know? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I know this is a line and this is a parabola. If I plug two into the top one, I get five. If I plug two into the bottom one, I get three. Those are not going to be connected, are they? It's going to be a line, and then I'm going to have a big gap, and then I'm going to go to a parabola. So if they're not connected, then what kind of continuity do we have? Right, it's going to be non-removable discontinuity at x equals 2. This can only be one of two things. Either it's going to be continuous, or it's going to be a non-removal discontinuity because we're going from a line to a parabola. All right, so now we're going to find the limits. So the limit as x approaches negative 4 of this function. Well, we have it right here. As we approach negative 4 from the negative side, what's the y value we're going to be approaching there? Let's see, what do you think? Negative 1, right. So this limit is going to be negative 1. It doesn't matter what it is from the right. It's only asking from the left. So from the left-hand side, 
We are approaching negative 1. Okay, what about the next one? On the next one, we are trying to find the length as x approaches 2 from the negative side. Spencer, what do you think on that one? Can you think of any way we could find it? Um, yeah, actually, yeah, we'll do this one first. I, was, I went over there. Yeah, let's do this one. What's this? It's up here, and we just already grabbed it. So as we approach 4 from the positive side, what's it going to be? 1, right. Now let's go up to this one. This is the one I meant that we could do pretty quickly. If we're trying to find the x, uh, the limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side. So does that mean from the less than or the greater than side of 2? Which one, Madison, if it's from the negative side? Less than side. So all I would do would be to plug 2 just into the top function. And so my limit then is going to have to be 5. So now we have the same function, but we have the limit as x approaches 2, now from the positive side. So what do you think we're going to have to do there? Now, what do you think we would do? Plug it into the yeah, plug it into the bottom one. From the positive side means from the greater than side. So we plug it in at the bottom. 2 squared is 4 minus 1 is 3. So same function we had up here, and we know there's a non-renewable discontinuity, and that's what forces those two limits to be different from the left and from the right. All right, let's look at the bottom here. For the following properties, answer where the, whether they occur for continuous functions at C, those with removable discontinuities at C, or those with non-removable discontinuities at C. And we're going to put in the word can here. So they don't always have to occur. It's just a matter of whether these properties can occur or not. So looking at the first one, f of c does not exist. Can you think of any function that's continuous where f of c does not exist? No. The definition of continuity says that the limit from the left, the limit from the right, and f of c all have to be the same. So that's not going to work for continuous. What about removable discontinuity? You think it could happen there? Yep, you guys are shaking your head. Yes? What about non-removable discontinuities? Is there any time when f of c does not exist? Definitely. Vertical asymptotes, right? So this can happen on either of those two. What about the general limit of f of x as x approaches c? Does not exist. There's only one case. Where? What is it? Uh, what is it, Kara? Right. NRDs only. The limit exists for removal discontinuity. It's just not non-removable. Okay, when is it that the limit from the left, the limit from the right, and the general limit will all be the same? It's going to be two of them. Bless you. Nick, what do you think? Two that will work for. Good. Okay, number four, f of c does exist. Where can this happen, that f of c does exist? This one I think is a little tricky. Is it continuous? Definitely. Can it happen that we do have an f of c for removables? Yep, because remember that case like this, guys? Some of you are kind of questioning that where we have the open dot, but then we have the closed dot somewhere else. So that, would, that can happen with removables. Can it happen with non-removables? 
So people are saying no, but I can think of a case where it could. What about, um, let's look back here. Look right back here. On example four on the front. On this example four, can you see how we do have, we have an F of C value here. See, we had a G of two. This was a closed dot. So we have it there, but we don't have it there. That's a non-removable discontinuity. So this can happen with non-removable discontinuities too. Not always, but it can. And maybe we should even underneath there just put sometimes. It's sometimes for both of those. All right. What about the limits from the left, the limit from the right, but it can't be equal to um, F of C. So these two are the same, but it's not the same as the Y value. This is only one of them, guys. What do you think is the only one where this can happen? What do you think, Haley? Yep, that's removable, good. The next one, the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right. There's only one of these where this can happen. Again, what do you think, Paige? Right. And then where is it that the limit does exist? Which of the three can have that happen? Uh, let's think, how many would there be? There'd be two. What are they, Kara? Good. Continuous and removable. Good job, guys. Number eight says that the limit exists, but the limit is not equal to F of C. There's only one time this can happen. Kyle, B, what do you think? Yep, you're right. Removable. Okay? Make sense? That should help you to figure all that out a little bit. The, the relationships there. Okay, and the last thing I want you to do is just within your group. I want you to do these three things. To write a function which would meet the following requirements. Removable discontinuity at x equals 4. That's the first problem. Then you want a non-removable discontinuity at x equals 4. And finally, both of these two things. So go ahead and write those down as you think they would work. Functions. Functions mean f of x equals what? g of x maybe equals what? And then I'll pull one or two to share. Good job, guys.